So jumping right back into the topic of solipsism, we once again return to the wiki documents on the subject to provide a point of reference. This time it's the association with Cartesian dualism to solipsism, of which the wiki document states, quote, There is another option, the belief that both ideals and reality exist. Dualists commonly argue that the distinction between the mind or ideas and matter can be proven by employing Leibniz's principle of the identity of indiscernibles, which states that if two things share all exactly the same qualities, then they must be identical, as in indistinguishable from each other, and therefore one and the same thing. Dualists then attempt to identify attributes of mind that are lacked by matter, such as privacy or intentionality, or vice versa, such as having a certain temperature or electrical charge. One notable application of the identity of indiscernibles was by René Descartes in his Meditations on First Philosophy. Descartes concluded that he could not doubt the existence of himself, the famous cogito ergo sum argument, but that he could doubt the separate existence of his body. From this, he inferred that the person Descartes must not be identical to the Descartes body, since one possessed a characteristic that the other did not. Namely, it could be known to exist. Solipsism agrees with Descartes in this aspect and goes further. Only things that can be known to exist for sure should be considered to exist. The Descartes body could only exist as an idea in the mind of the person Descartes. Descartes and dualism aim to prove the actual existence of reality as opposed to a phantom existence as well as the existence of God in Descartes' case using the realm of ideas merely as a starting point. But solipsism usually finds those further arguments unconvincing. The solipsist instead proposes that his, her own unconscious is the author of all seemingly external events from reality. Unquote. All right, so back into the neighborhood of René Descartes. In case any of you were wondering, Cartesius is the Latin form of the name Descartes. Hence, Cartesian dualism is a reference to René Descartes' ideal of dualism. So with this in mind, an alternative option exists. What does this imply? Another option. An option of what? What the hell are they talking about? The option of a belief that both ideals and reality exist. Oh, you mean an alternative abstraction? A different story to tell ourselves about the stream of sensory perceptibles? That option? Oh, yeah, okay. Whatever. The concept that both ideals and reality exist. Interesting, but how does this relate to solipsism? If anything, this is a move away from solipsism, not a move towards it. Awareness is the only reality. Concepts and objects are existential factors, but are merely varying layers of illusion. A dualist is actually a detriment to the truth of solipsism as solipsism acknowledges the implications of non-duality. So to embrace dualism with distinctions of quality and illusion as proof of some kind of separation and illusion is a counterproductive exercise. Distinctions of mind and matter? They don't really mean mind, though. Not in the sense of awareness. They mean it in reference to the thinking function. So, more aptly stated, they are discerning distinctions of abstractions and matter. And this is only possible from a diluted standpoint. 
Matter is an aspect of mind, and abstractions are an aspect of mind. So to seek to prove a difference between matter and abstractions by referencing different appearances of the exact same thing is worm-eyed and short-sighted. Accordingly, if there cannot be separate objects or entities that have all their properties in common, then it follows that everything contained in sense perception is one and the same. As everything in sense perception share the exact same core foundation. Indeed, qualities are illusory. Just as in a dream, delusion facilitates the belief that dream concepts and dream objects differ in their attributes. Lucidity, however, shows this distinction to be a complete fantasy. This is to forget the fundamentals and to get stuck on the surface. This would be the same type of mindset that might similarly jump to an assumption that ice and steam are fundamentally different. But sage, ice and steam are a different ball of wax than matter in the abstractions. No, it isn't any different. It's a metaphor, but we can liken abstractions to steam and objects to ice. The only difference in this is the mistaken belief that there is a difference. The whole idea of difference is a falsehood. Differences set up polarity, and polarity is varying degrees of sameness. This is the age-old lesson of non-duality. Yin and Yang are the symbolic representation of dualism, but to believe in the seemingly oppositional differences of the Yin and Yang is to consider the configuration from the most absolute shallowest perspective. Non-duality is wisdom attained from the meta-perspective, and attaining this wisdom entails not letting the mind get inattentive by the incitement of illusion. And whether it's a buzzing fly or falling bombs, the game is the same. Illusion facilitates delusion by snagging the attention through varying extents of distraction. Once the mind is distracted, it is in a position of acquiescence to externals. Once a mind is submissive to externals, it is disempowered, and hence has fallen into mental slavery. When the mind can finally discern all this, the overall deception of illusion becomes laid bare. René Descartes' confusion and subsequent conclusions regarding this issue highlights the difficulty of the overall discernment. Ideas and matter are not a dualistic polarity. Concept and object are identical aspects with the appearance of a difference. Thus, the proposed dualism here is really just a false dichotomy. And hence, the principle of the identities of indiscernibles is a tool of misapplication. Descartes made a distinction between his physical body and the person Descartes. But what the hell is a person, anyway? An object? An idea? The body only exists as an idea in the mind of the person, Descartes. But isn't the thinking function itself also just an idea? The fault here is the assumption that there's going to be some one true only existing identification found that we can then slap a label on and call the actual reality. Hence the idea of a person. Only there isn't any person existing anywhere. You can't actualize a self because there is no self.
In order for there to be a self, there would have to be an other. But since there is no other, there is no self. Remember, Descartes and dualism aim to prove the actual existence of reality as opposed to a phantom existence, using the realm of ideas as merely a starting point. But is that an actual existence? The realm of ideas doesn't seem to be very actual. This would be more abstract than actual. And this is why, despite cogito ergo sum, Descartes must have unconsciously chosen to assume some sort of basic template of objective materialism, as the self that he decided could not be doubted and differed from his physical body was assumed to be the thinking function. It's, I think, therefore I am, right? Hence, thinking is set up as the only aspect known for sure to exist. Only why get caught up on the thinking function? It's not the true identity. And to try to set up some disparity of existing factors based on an erroneous identification strays away from the truth. With lucidity, you can't grab a hold of the magical red balloon as the undisputed reality and then declare all else to be dubious aspects to be doubted. The magical red balloon is no different than anything else in the equation. And then the statement. The solipsist instead proposes that his, her own unconscious is the author of all seemingly external events from reality. What solipsist? What his, her? What unconscious author? And moreover, what reality? Reality is what is actual, and there is nothing actual about the transient stream of sense perception illusion. Reifying an external is not in line with lucid awareness. With lucidity, there is no need to find an identification. As the true identity of the empty self isn't represented, as any kind of manifestation in dream phenomena. So Descartes was sort of on the right track with his inquiries, but stumbled when he settled down on the thinking function as the undoubtable existing truth. The question must be asked, what is the context of the thinking function? Enter the expanse inflating container that gives platform to all existential manifestation. Enter pure awareness.